Hey, you know what all the cool kids have? Neon signs. Colin first. Dr. Mike has a nice one. Yes, Perry, definitely know what I'm talking about. Veritasium, and so many more. You're always adding to this spot too, right? Yeah, like a new sign every couple weeks. Yeah, no. If I had 400 pounds to spare on a neon sign, I would spend that on a, say, a 3D printer. And if I still had that, I would get a laser cutter or a drill press or any other tool. You see my point. I'm sure making one would cost even more. So only see one option. To fake one. Let's make it happen. I first need a full-scale design template to keep me on track, so I'm trying to sketch one. A portion of the cost associated with neon signs is the high temperatures required to manipulate glass tubes. I am going to use plastic to obtain the same look with much greater ease. In fact, a heat gun is all I need to be able to shape my letters. But take care if you're trying something like this. I've burned my fingers a number of times when pressing against the tube at 300 degrees C. I want to keep the tubes hollow, so I'm greasing some rubber tubing to slide into the acrylic. This prevents it from pinching at sharper angles. Let me show you a time lapse of a single letter, so you can get a feeling of what it takes. Normally, it's 10 to 15 minutes per letter. When heated, acrylic softens and resembles a rubber hose, which can then be bent into any shape. But it is important to apply the heat on all sides, as it cracks otherwise. Once cooled a little, it becomes solid again. It is pretty fun actually. So that's the M done. Let's get a few more. Next, I need to make a backboard. I will use reclaimed hardwood for that. Some planks are straighter than others, but they all need some tidying up. I will glue three of them together to achieve the right dimensions. Once the glue is set, I need to drill some precisely placed holes to hold the letters. At this stage, I'm using my router to make room for the electronics, which I will handle later. Next, some more planing. and a couple of coats of staining, and we're golden. I'm adding a couple of picture frame hooks to be able to hang the sign on my wall. Now for the secret sauce. I obviously cannot have hot gases inside the acrylic, so I opted for the strongest UV fluorescent dye I could find. And look at that glow. I thought I could mix the powder with, say, washing up liquid. I did not spend too much time thinking of what medium to put the powder in, and figured that anything viscous enough should keep it suspended forever. Now, my note from the future. I was wrong. A few weeks later the powder did sink to the bottom, so I flushed everything and replaced it with epoxy resin. But never mind, watch the past me learn the hard way. I've got myself a big syringe to be able to fill the letters. But look at me not knowing how syringes are meant to be filled.
My first idea was just to put the liquid from one side and let the gravity do its work. But that was taking way too long. So I had to think again. Oh, and look who learned how to use the syringe. I was lucky to find some rubber tube which makes an airtight seal with the acrylic. Now I could push enough liquid all at once. As for the ceiling, I'm using hot glue. It's pretty crude, I know, but it does the job. Right, the downside of my sign is that it needs to be lit by UV light to glow. To accomplish this, I will have several aluminum tubes which extend outwards from the sign to hold the UV diodes to shine the light back onto the surface. I'm bending the tubes to the right angle in a vise. This method ensures that the inner diameter is retained, which is important, as I will run wires through the tubes to power the LEDs, but not compromise on the aesthetics. I've bent a small plate using the same method. Both the plate and tube being aluminium, they can be joined together using aluminium brazing rods. I've also bent the little heat sinks which are required as I will be using 3 watt LEDs. I am adding some thermal paste on the LED before soldering it on. I'm also adding solder paste on the heatsink itself. The holder being metal will further help spreading the heat. These high power LEDs need constant current, which can be sourced by the module I have in my hand, the link in the description. It needs to be configured before the use, so let me handle this. I'm using 4 LEDs around 4 volt each, so I need to set the voltage to anything higher than 16 volts. The LEDs are in series, so the voltage adds. Now for the current. I tested 200 mA to give a good balance between brightness, heat and power consumption. So let me set the module to source that. Let's put everything together. I'm using hot glue to keep LED rods in place. It's a tight fit, so there's no need for anything stronger. The wires can now be soldered together and secured in place with some more hot glue. The power connector fits nicely to its slot. And so does the power board. Final little nut. And we're done. It looks impressive as is, but let's hit the light. Oh yes. Would you have thought this could turn out this bright? I know I secretly wanted to, but never expected this much glow. I will take that any day. And for the fraction of the price of the real thing, 
I don't even care that I need UV for this. Quite the opposite. I'm digging the orange and purple combo. Go ahead, click like, subscribe, and check my other stuff. There's a few no less cool projects on the channel. As for now, thanks for watching, and until next time.